welcome to the Fiji Symposium 2019 here in Cairo, Egypt, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Mr. Vijay Mori, who is Program Coordinator for ITU, as well as being leader of the uh, Fiji Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group. Vijay, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me. Now, look, could I ask you to begin with, what are some of the key achievements of the Fiji uh, Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group? Yes, the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group started its work oh, almost uh, more than a year ago and uh, we've had made we made good progress uh, to date and we've had a number of uh, deliverables that have already been uh, you know been made ready and these uh, I would name just a few of these deliverables um, so in 2018 uh, we produce uh, four deliverables and these deliverables are the uh, methodology for the measurement of quality of service, uh, key performance indicators for digital financial services. Uh, this uh, methodology provides a good, very good guidance for telecom regulators uh, in measurement of the QoS uh, KPIs for DFS, focusing on person-to-person uh, -person, uh, mobile money transfer. And this uh, methodology has been submitted to the ITUT study group 12 uh, for uh, standardization uh, purposes. The second deliverable which was produced uh, in uh, 2018 is uh, the report on the use cases for digital ledger uh, technologies uh, for financial uh, inclusion. This report identifies some of the most popular use cases for uh, DLT in uh, financial inclusion. So the third deliverable that we produce is uh, the report on data privacy issues for emerging technologies um, such as uh, big data analytics, machine learning and digital uh, identity. Uh, this report has been uh, submitted to the symposium this symposium for a discussion uh, at, the, uh, at the panel on data privacy and we intend to finalize uh, this report in 2019. The fourth uh, deliverable uh, that uh, we produced is the uh, unlicensed digital investment schemes which looks at those uh, digital Ponzi schemes uh, that affect a lot of developing countries and the report also provides some uh, recommendations on measures for international collaboration to help uh, developing countries in assessing or, or and also uh, in, uh, mitigating the impact of these uh, digital Ponzi schemes. So all our reports are available, uh, you know, on the on the ITU uh, website, and uh, we'll be finalizing uh, these reports uh, over 2019. And uh, over the next, uh, over the coming period, that is up to 2020, we intend to finalize at least four of our deliverables, uh, which are the report on mitigating the impact of the SS7 uh, vulnerability, uh, the security assurance framework for digital uh, financial services, uh, the report on DFS uh, user competency uh, framework, uh, and uh, the security issues of distributed ledger technologies. And perhaps I, hope I could ask you to elaborate a little bit on the security assurance framework for DFS and its importance to the industry. Yes, uh, the security assurance framework will provide uh, a guidance for telco uh, regulators uh, as well as DFS uh, operators as to what are the um, security risks uh, in the DFS ecosystem and how to mitigate the impact of those risks. The framework has uh, three main components. There's a risk assessment framework, there's a, a what we call a security control measures which helps to, Im, uh, to mitigate the impact of the threat and vulnerabilities and then we have a, a set of auditing guidelines that will help, uh, that will help uh, regulators to assess uh, the compliance of the operators with regards to the implementation of the security controls. So right now the working group is, work is uh, developing uh, the framework and uh, they are actually uh, producing the uh, different sets of control measures and very soon these will be presented uh, probably at the next uh, symposium next year 
and this uh, will be a complete set of uh, regulatory measures, not only regulatory measures, but also a set of uh, control measures and auditing guidelines that could be implemented by the DFS operators and also by uh, regulators. And why is data privacy important for DFS? And, uh, and what's the, this, the working group uh, are doing uh, in this area? Data privacy is an important issue in digital financial services because uh, it's consumers' information that are being uh, shared uh, whenever there is a digital financial services transaction. So the information is sent uh, over the uh, network. It's stored at the uh, uh, network providers' uh, systems, but the user must have some uh, control on their personal data, you know, how this information is going to be shared and also whether they agree to give away their personal data. So all these issues must be managed uh, in a way that the user has some control, you know, over the personal data. And uh, in digital financial services, we are now using more and more technologies like big data analytics and machine learning on which the we don't know whether the user or really have control over the personal data. So uh, in the Security Infrastructure and Trust Working Group, uh, we, uh, we developed a report on the data privacy issues of those emerging technologies, highlighting the various issues that regulators maybe should uh, look into and provide guidance uh, to the industry and to users on how to best uh, protect consumers' personal data because it's much more difficult than ever to find out what these machines are, are talking about and what they're talking about to themselves about as well. So exactly. Uh, and, uh, and how much data is being collected on, on, on our behalf and, on, on of course, on the, the people that we're doing business's behalf as well. Yes. And what nowadays we use the smartphones and the f- smartphone itself collects information, you know, like location information, and you don't know about this. You know, it's all going to the... Uh, Uh, smartphone manufacturer's uh, system. So did you agree to give away this information? So these are things that, you know, the the software developer or the uh, smartphone manufacturer should give the user, uh, you know, the ability to be able to say whether I agree to have my my personal information or my location uh, being given away. What do you hope will be some of the key takeaways from this uh, symposium? I think uh, there are two key takeaways in my opinion. One is the regulatory collaboration, which which seems to be essential uh, in this uh, space between the financial services sector, the telecom sector, and maybe also the data protection uh, commissioner's uh, sphere. Uh, and other regulatory bodies that have an impact on this sector. I mean, there's more, the more we see it, technology is evolving quite fast. Uh, and uh, regulatory collaboration is important and sharing of knowledge is especially important to enable uh, you know, countries to learn from their, each other's experience. And I think a platform like F- the Fiji Symposium, which brings together different countries and also different regions, and we have different industries uh, also present, can help to bridge uh, this this, uh, financial inclusion gap and enable more uh, knowledge sharing among uh, different stakeholders. The second aspect uh, that, uh, the second takeaway from this uh, symposium is uh, the need uh, for having uh, a better, I would say, a better environment for uh, also for collaboration on uh, one is regulatory collaboration the other one is the security collaboration and I think there there is also a need to have in place uh, some collaboration at the international level to help uh, especially the developing countries to better manage uh, those risks uh, uh, that affect uh, or that can impact um, digital financial services uh, and in a number of situations, uh, these uh, risks occur or these threats occur from outside their country. Uh, because nowadays with the, uh, cyber, with the cyber environment, everybody is connected to everyone. And uh, it, 
would be good to have some kind of international collaboration on the security as well, on cyber security, to also be able to, you know, to better uh, respond and provide a good, uh, uh, I would say, let's say, prote better protection to, to all countries in case of the cyber security incidents. Well, thank you for responding to our questions here and being, uh, taking the time to be here in the studio. And we look forward to catching up with you again, hopefully, at the, uh, the third edition of, uh, of this uh, symposium. Thank you very much. Cheers.